You won the Samuel Johnson Prize for non-fiction, and now you've won the Costa Prize for biography. Um, it must have been quite a year. It's been astonishing. I've, I've had to, you know, I really have literally found myself pinching, my, pinching myself on occasion to try and sort of, am I going to wake up and it's all a dream? It's been astonishing. I mean, real honour and a deeply moving experience. A pleasant dream? A very pleasant dream, yes. Uh, there are those who say that uh, once you get onto this publicity treadmill, it can be a terrible nightmare. It's not been a nightmare. It's been tiring and exhausting and joyous. You know, and, and the real joy has been meeting readers of the book. Um, and I, I've been you know, almost brought to tears many times in people's own stories of loss and bereavement and how animals have been tangled up in, that, in, the, in their lives. Um, and it's made me feel much less alone. You know, this is, uh, we all go through this. Now, this is about your attempts, efforts, successful efforts, a few years ago to train a goshawk, who you called Mabel. In the wake of your father's death, you were grieving. Um, it's, in many ways, an intensely personal book. Did you have, at any stage, reservations about being so open and so frank about your personal feelings? That's a fascinating question. When I first started writing it, I, uh, without realising it, was sort of trying to be a little bit less honest and a little, a little less open than I was in the finished book. Um, and it didn't work. The book wouldn't, wouldn't come together. And I realised that I had to turn my gaze upon grief as unflinchingly as the hawk used to turn her gaze upon the landscape. And only then, when I, when I was true to how it felt, did the, book, did the book start. It's a very vivid account of what you went through, and you and Mabel. Um, were you taking notes at the time, or is this all reconstructed from memory? Um, I, both, really. I did keep a diary. I started writing after my father died as a way of kind of stitching the world back together again. And then that world had a hawk in it. But I didn't use those notes as much as I'd thought. I think once you, when you've lost someone close to you, something weird happens to your memory. Your powers of recall become crystalline. And I can remember pretty much every moment of that time with Mabel as if it's in front of me, you know, it was a, r a really transporting experience writing the book and sometimes quite a difficult one going back to those times and the person I was. Um, but the book in the end I think was a kind of uh, a settling of, a settling down, a goodbye to my father and, and to that time. Now this is a personal memoir but it's also, and this may help to explain why it's won the Costa Biography Prize, it's also a partial biography of T.H. White, the man who wrote The Once and Future King, story of King Arthur, filmed by Disney and so on, who himself tried to film, uh, to train a goshawk and was a very troubled character. Incredibly troubled, uh, had a horrendous childhood uh, both at home and at school. Um, and struggled with his sexuality. Um, he ran away from his life as a school teacher to try and train this hawk as a way of really battling the demons within himself and wrote a book about it. Um, and it was published in the 1950s called The Goss Hawk. And that was a kind of inspiration to me.